Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to make a quick video and this uh, video is specifically for my leaders or leaders out there. Now, there are really only two categories in life if we were to just reduce everything to simplicity. There are followers and then there are leaders. Now, that begs the question, you know, especially when followers say, well, if I'm going to be a follower all the time, will I ever be a leader? And the answer is yes, you can be a leader. Now, there's a, a small little footnote to add to that is, will, what type of leader would you be? So to me, a leader is someone who is leading people, whether it's a person or a group of people, a city, a state, a country, uh, or the world, but leading people um, to a better place, to a place where there's nonviolence, a place to where there's love, a place to where there's abundance, a place now, you know, some of these things, of course, sound like outlandish, like, okay, well, what leader is going to do that? And that's kind of the problem. So leaders uh, that really lead in that way, with that respect, with that mindset, are typically leaders that get killed. But they do it nonetheless because it is the right thing to do. So can followers be leaders? Absolutely. So now that I got that all the way, I'm sure you've heard of the saying, that familiarity breeds contempt. And for a long time, you know, I personally didn't really understand that phrase, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. But I think I finally got it, you know. Um, now, the example I'm going to give now, this is not a religious uh, thing. This is just a, a, an example. So Jesus was doing miracles all over the land. He went to and fro and he... Uh, gathered more and more disciples and uh, just conversely speaking the disciples that ended up staying with him became leaders so that's a perfect example of how followers can become leaders but nonetheless he he was uh, going from place to place and then he went to his hometown where he couldn't do any miracles and it's interesting because the scripture says that the people who grew up with him, knew him just as Jesus, you know, the son of the carpenter. So they didn't see him as anything else. They most certainly didn't see him as a leader. And so he said, their disbelief has caused me not to do miracles. So that's very profound if you think about it, you know, and I think that that stays and that rings true in uh, most of our lives. You know, we try to help people out, you know, we all come from somewhere, all right? We didn't know everything, nor do we still know everything. But we try to elevate, and especially as leaders, you know, we continue to grow and grow and grow and grow, but not for ourselves, but for the greater good, for everybody. And the problem is that familiarity breeds contempt. Meaning, if I go to people that knew me from the past, well, they don't want to hear about me. They go, you're, you're Joseph. You're that dummy. You're that bully. You're that guy who likes to fight. You're that guy who doesn't listen. You're that guy who doesn't know how to get good grades. And so they just are reminded of the old Joseph. So that old Joseph is the familiarity that they have of me. Okay. So it breeds contempt. Well, I'm not following this guy. Who is he? I knew him back when he was just a dummy. He wasn't giving to society. He wasn't doing anything but doing everything for himself. And that is really where the phrase becomes so profound because that is true. Now, we, you may physically need to move to another place, but at the very least, if you can't physically move somewhere else, you can emotionally, psychologically, <laughs> spiritually move. And that is to say, you don't have to stay in a place where people are... Uh, unbelieving and I think that that's going to ring true in every leader's life you're going to have people who have contempt for you because you're just Joseph and the problem is unfortunately is that that's going to be uh, a life of perpetuity with respect to uh, people having contempt uh, towards you because then you build a life and you build different friendships and then you have families and you have new neighbors and new friends and they're going to get familiar with you. And, and then again, you'll just be looked at eventually as just an average Joe and they refuse to take heed to anything 
or all of your years of, of wisdom and understanding because familiarity breeds contempt. I'm not listening to this guy. I know his problems. I understand that this guy uh, thinks about this. He cries about that. Um, he hurts just like anybody else. True, true, true. But that really isn't the description of what a leader is. A leader is someone who continues to rise above it all, despite or in spite of all of those obstacles. And I think that really is really where the contempt happens. See, people see you and they know that you're rising above certain occasions. They saw all of the turmoil and the pain and the torture, uh, whether mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and, and they saw you and they continue to see you kind of, kind of just break through the, the, the mire. And, and, and that's the problem. So uh, a real follower is good if a real follower is eventually going to be a real leader. But unfortunately, um, for the sake of simplicity, um, in this example, we literally, you know, if we were to cut it black and white, you know, left and right, up and down, uh, there are followers and there are leaders. And as unfortunate as that is, um, especially in a world that demands more and more and more of you as they give less and less and less of themselves, um, the law of reciprocity kind of just uh, atrophies. I mean, it just dwindles away to nothing because no one, everybody wants, but no one likes to give. So to all my leaders out there, and you know who you are, continue to give. It is a hard fight. Understand and uh, recalibrate, regroup, and just understand and know that your purpose is greater than this. And uh, one day, you know, uh, to all my leaders out there who are really truly doing something uh, to try to make an impact in this world with the gifts um, that they've been given, um, I guess we'll, we'll meet each other in heaven one day um, after uh, somebody ends up shooting us. So <laughs> I guess that's what my life is destined to be. But here's the thing, um, you know, the followers could be anybody, they could be uh, your kids, they could be your spouse, they could be your siblings, they could be your cousins, you know, they could be the closest people to you. And because they are close, they do not see your greatness. They do not see, um, they only see either just dad, just a husband, just a cousin, just a neighbor, just a friend. And, um, and sometimes you, you have to kind of break out of that because you know, um, that word just, it, it's like kryptonite. It just kind of like suffocates you. And you got to kind of find a way to, to break out of that and still be uh, the leader that you were called to be. I mean, that is our purpose in life. All right, guys. So I hope this video helped at least one person. And to all my leaders out there, uh, by all means, just uh, shoot me a text, a DM, or uh, just put your comments here. All right, guys, so I hope you have a good day. Uh, and just know that every time I give news like this, uh, this is great news, okay? This is great news. This is something for you to know, like, okay, okay, I get it. There's, there are other people out there who are in the same boat as I am. And being a leader, um, it's a double-edged sword, man. Sometimes it feels like it really, really sucks. And uh, although it's an honor and it's great uh, to be a leader for God, um, it's just what you're called to do and you have to do it. All right, guys. So keep your head up. I'm sure things are going to work out abundantly. Take care.